Hi and welcome back to the channel, Chuang here. Now, I have a quick question for you. How many of us are stuck in jobs which we are miserable in, but lack the courage, motivation or willpower to do anything about it? Well, the following is the story of someone who was in that position, but who did make the decision to leave her job mid-career uh, to fulfill her ambition, her childhood dreams. Her name is Ivy Tiong, and this is the story of how she left her job in banking in her mid-40s to pursue her dreams of becoming a jewellery designer. As always, if you do like this video that I produce and uh, do consider subscribing to the channel, uh, like the video and tell me what you think in the comments below. And now, dear viewers, me and our presents Ivy Tiong. Hey Ivy, thanks for doing this. Good morning. Um, you look happy, you look refreshed. You said you saw the uh, Oscars and you were quite inspired by uh, Michelle Yeoh winning her Academy Award. Yes, absolutely. Thanks Chuang for inviting me today. Yeah, um, well, I came here in the very right time where Michelle Yeoh took her award and uh, she commented that, hey ladies, <laughs> don't let anyone tell you you have passed your prime. <laughs> That's amazing, right? Yeah, that, that word really shook me up. I was like, yeah, so what? I'm like, you know, already past 40s and look, People waited 40 years to achieve her dream. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, I, I did some checking on you, mm. you know, as you do for research, right? Mm. And this is actually your second mm. career because you didn't start in jewellery. You started in the corporate world, telco and banking, right? Mm. So, so that was the, I, I guess for Asian families, that's the formula, right? You come and get a normal job, nine to five, but then you can't stop passionate people from pursuing their passion. Some people take the courageous step yeah. of, of uh, doing what you do, which is to leave the 9-to-5 job. Some people, they never do that. What about that time? How did you cut loose from that formula? Um, it was all started... Yeah, I was in the banking line uh, that time, before I started my jewellery career. It was all started when I realised um, I'm kind of like seeking some other fulfilment besides my 9 to 5 corporate job. I mean, uh, despite working in a corporate, it was definitely rewarding, uh, stable income and other employee benefits. Uh, but then, deep inside my heart, I, I felt like I can do more. That time I was still in 30s. So maybe it's like a mid-life thoughts or, or something like that. And uh, over the weekend, I pick up new hobby and stuff like that. It was all started with love. Okay, love what you do. So from, from hobby, passion, yeah, I ventured into business. Yeah. Did you always, were you always into jewellery or did you, you know, was it circumstance that forced you into this area? Um, no, it was always jewellery. Because when I started a, a, a hobby uh, over the weekend, that was for pastime and things like that, I discovered myself and my teacher discovered me as well. So she commented that I, I, I had hidden talent doing all the pearl making jewellery, jewellery making, handcraft jewellery and stuff like that. And from there, I pursued my studies uh, into uh, jewellery designs and jewelries. Yeah. So the idea of leaving the job and the stable income must have been quite tough at the time for you, right? Yeah, it was a tough decision making. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it was a big change because not only from the income basis, of course, uh, there are a couple of considerations before you make that decision. Of course, income is number one yeah. for living and things like that. For you to move forward, you must have enough bullets to support what are you going to do in future? Uh, besides that, uh, from having an identity from to nobody, starting from mm. scratch, mm. you know. You yeah. lose your status, right? Your title, right? In in the office, right? Correct. You had some vice president or whatever. Uh, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And and although you. you uh, I mean, the identity, for example, you're attached with a corporate mm. company, yeah. you have a name under the company. Uh, but when you venture out on your own, it's definitely a very big move and uh, very challenging. 
Yeah, so um, it must have been quite tough, right? Because you mm. you left your income, but then you also have to have capital to start, and mm. you also need to get a name for yourself in in the jewelry world, right? How 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 did that happen? Um, it wasn't happened so fast um, because it's really many consideration. Uh, first and foremost, I don't have like kind of like of business knowledge. I never do business before. So um, it, it, it doesn't start like just have customer and just have the money to buy stock, just like that. So it was all started with very small, small testing stage. It's like a pilot uh, test because things are very uncertain. I don't have a, a really proper business planning. I, I, I don't have a coach and, and all these things. So from learning the correct skill, starting from there, knowledge, capturing the right knowledge, uh, uh, learning the correct skill. From there, I started to test the market by selling in a bazaar. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, okay. I was doing jewelry making, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I kind of like invest on those uh, um, uh, cheaper material that I can play with, and I make some jewelry, mainly pearls. I love pearls that time. Now I still love pearls, but for the market sake, yeah, diamond is still the best. <laughs> we will talk about it later. <laughs> so from there, I, 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 I start selling at bazaar, um, um, and and I get to understand the market knowledge, the consumer feedback, and then only I move towards custom jewellery, doing custom made for people. Why I started custom jewellery was because, um, first of all, I don't have such a big capital to like buy all the ready-made stock and slowly wait to sell. Okay. Secondly, is like I see the market, so uh, like, Back those days, custom jewellery wasn't that popular. So when I start doing some market research uh, 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 about custom jewellery, most of the feedback are like, oh, you have to wait like uh, three months minimum just to do one jewellery. Or you don't even have a chance to speak about your design, your desired design with anyone else. There are many uh, typical salesmen, professional salesmen, but unfortunately, there are not many designers that customer can speak with or to get consultation and things like that. So from there, I was like, wow, maybe there will be a market for this niche, you know, a niche market for this for my services. Yeah, yeah. yeah it could be said that you started at the right time because, mm. um, you know, maybe 20 years ago, Asian and, and maybe... Um, their pockets, the you know mass affluent wasn't so common now. Um, but in the last ten years, you can see that Asian and, and people in Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, um, Thailand for sure, you know Philippines, the ASEAN countries, they've really had a, a really large middle class now that are really moving up the affluence ladder. So maybe in those days it was more of a commodity you buy the ready to make stuff. But in the last ten years, artisan work, not just in jewelry, everything. Yeah. Um, leather wear, shoes, you know, suits and all that, they've mm. really gone through the roof. Mm. So maybe you, right timing also, right, for you? Mm. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I see the trends changing, as in like uh, from, uh, from, from, from people who love ready-made to become someone uh, that needs certain preference. Okay, for example, jewellery is a very personal uh, item and, and, and carry a lot of uh, emotion. So they, they want something significant to maybe if let's say a couple want to buy a pair of rings, they want something to represent their relationship or certain story, their relationship story or a mother buying for the daughter. You know, they want some indication of uh, uh, yeah, emotional stuff that, 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 that can leave uh, a hint to the wearer that it's a love from mother to daughter, something like that, you know. So they want to express themselves in the jewellery. So they'll tell you the origin story and then mm. you create something to reflect the origin, is that right? Uh, yes. Normally, uh, what I will do is to understand the customer better, you know, by having a casual chat and then from there, I will recommend certain things. I will do a bit of sketching and, and recommend certain 
uh, designed for them. Yeah, really right time because you can see this in cars as well, right? You know, last time, 20 years ago, um, to own a Porsche is a big deal. But now, you can say Porsches become... Not that I own a Porsche, <laughs> la, but, but Porsche is like, okay, everybody got Porsche, what about else is there? Mm -hmm. And then you custom-made your Rolls-Royce. Not yes. that I have a Rolls-Royce, but you yes. think you custom-made your Rolls-Royce and then, you, you know? So the whole bespoke artisan mm -hmm. uh, scene is really, really booming. How, how would you describe um, Asian tastes or really Malaysian tastes? Mm, I would say uh, Asian still very... Um, uh, how to say... Uh, mm, their taste is more towards diamond, something that is very blink. I'm not saying other stone is not blink. Well, we have many kinds of stones. Some are uh, different cutting, uh, yeah. Some are uh, the, the shininess is different from diamond. So, but diamond is still the best in the market for so Asian. The uh, more sparkly, yeah. the more shiny. The more the fire, better. the more brilliant, the better. <laughs> <laughs> and the more expensive. <laughs> is it because the taste here is still quite nouveau rich in the sense like new money? Because mm. old money might not want that much shiny, right? I, I don't know. Um no, the shinier no. is the best. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So, the so, more bling is the best. <laughs> so is it the same in Europe as well? Because in uh, yeah, in Western country uh, they they are more acceptable to other stones, uh, for example, maybe ruby, sapphire, pearls, emerald, and different kind of stones. Yeah, over here they are more towards diamonds. Okay. Yeah. So describe diamonds for those who are maybe a little bit new to the game, right? How would you classify types of diamonds and f start at the uh, at the bottom and go to the top? Oh, okay. A well, diamonds, nowadays, diamonds have uh, lab-grown as well as natural, right? Uh, those days, lab-grown, um, not, not available yet. But now, lab-grown can be certified as well. So, if we are talking about uh, natural diamonds, natural diamonds is the hardest stone in the world. So, nothing can break diamond except diamond itself. Nothing can cut diamond except diamond itself. So you need another diamond to cut mm, the diamond. Okay. So uh, that is also one of the um, uh, significant meaning for wedding couple. It's like, you know. Our, really, our love will never be <laughs> Correct, will, will never die, will never be break. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the kind of thing is unbreakable love yeah, uh, yeah. with your loved one, something like that. So that is why diamond is always represent the best for engagement ring. It's uh, the permanence the, of it. La. Yeah, in the current yeah. market. And then yeah. you can classify diamonds by clarity, by cuts and yeah, by shine. Yes. So can you talk about those yeah. classifications? Okay, a little bit technical. Uh, diamond can be, there are many grades of diamond. So four, normally we use 4C. Uh, it's actually a, a, a cut, clarity, a color and carrot. Carrot means the weight size of the stone. Uh. Yes, so each of these category has different ranking. So from the low to the highest. So the highest ranking will cost more and rarity is also the key. Uh, rarity you know, means the rarer to find because not all stone can be cut into one carat, two carat or three carat. So the bigger size it is, the rarer to cut and to get, to get to, and to cut. And therefore more expensive, lah. Yes. So go through the four C's, okay? I'm sure everybody wants to know. It's not the it's not the, like the Singapore five C, right? Cash uh, club credit and the condo, condo <laughs> the country club, right? This is cut clarity uh, color and um, cut, cut clarity color and carrot. Carrot, okay. Um, so talk about cut first. How, how would you classify cuts? Um, uh, okay. Natural, okay. When the diamond mine from you know uh, the origin source. It's basically not shiny. It's like kind of like a natural rock. So we need to have proportions of cut uh, to make it polish and cut to make it shiny. And we call it facet, facet stone. Facets, yeah. Yeah, so okay. we have like a good cut, very good cut, excellence. And we even have triple excellence. <laughs> so triple excellence being the really excellence cut. Mm. So that the reflection of light, when it shines on the stone, when it's reflected on the stone, it reflects back. So therefore, you can see the fire and the rainbow. 
<laughs> Fire the rainbow. Then yeah. okay, then clarity. Okay, clarity is the um, in layman is like the cleanliness of the stone. When the stone comes natural, of course you will see sometimes some flaw and inclusions inside the stone. Like sometimes you can see cloud, feather, or uh, small black dots, uh, which normally not visible by naked eye. But then uh, some of the uh, very clean stone, we call it internal flawless. Flawless, <laughs> that is the very top grade. So we have like from low grade, you know, uh, but normally we don't recommend the low, low grade. Lah, mm. huh? So the acceptable uh, level to the market is like SI, VS, no, and PVSS and, and, and yeah, PVS that. and internal flawless. And then you've also got now yeah. color, right? So there's yeah. this pink diamonds, there's blue yeah. diamonds, right? Yeah. The famous blue diamond, right? And then there's white diamond, right? Yeah. So when we talk about the color in the GIA grade, a color stone like pink yellow is not classified under this C, uh, under the the white 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 diamond. So when we say white diamond is uh, really uh, grading under the white category. Of course, the lowest grade of colour can see a hint of yellow, but not like the yellow diamond kind of yellow. It's like a hint of yellow. So the whiter it is, the more expensive. Wow, okay. Yeah. And of course, carrot is the size of the carrot. Like one carrot, two carrot, yes. point one carrot, point two carrot. Yes. So yes. the common, common size for like say a wedding couple is, mm. is how big? Um, zero, uh, half a carat. 0.5 carat? Yeah, that is the most affordable range. Uh, but I do a lot slightly below one carat, like 0 0.9, 0 0.95. Yeah. So a reasonable, a reasonable level of clarity and cuts and colour. Mm. And around about 0 0.9 carats, how much does that cost? Roughly? Um... If we look at 0 0.9 with VS, um, 30,000 Okay, that's not, that's not, that's, yeah. you know, to, to, to bestow upon your loved one for a <laughs> family heirloom is, is not crazy, right, I guess? Yes, yes, right? yeah. So the idea of value, right, so the value of, like, say, jewellery, it doesn't mm. come so much in terms of, you know, like how we think about investment value, like share prices rise and, mm. you know, gold prices rise and all that. The mm. idea of value in jewellery is not so much the... The secondary market, but but it's more like a um, relationship value, right? How how would you describe the way people look at jewelry in terms of value? Mm. The way uh, I I would say the way people look at jewelry is very sentimental. Okay, uh, of course there will be a small percentage who come and ask me about the investment value, but typically, it's based on emotional value. It's like buying for special occasion or for loved one. Um, they they normally will buy it as and for the wearer to keep it as their memory mm, or even uh, heirloom. So a typical yeah. buyer would be like how? What kind of what kind of, what's your typical mm. profile of a buyer? Uh, my profile uh, there will be main, mainly two groups. Uh, the first group will be on uh, wedding couples or couples. Yeah, those are the group they are looking for diamond engagement rings, wedding bands, uh, and stuff like that. They're a bit younger. Um, I would say slightly below 30 or 30s. Yeah. Then another group of uh, uh, customer would be uh, uh, more towards female, uh, slightly matured adult, female, uh, maybe 40s and above. Yeah, that is also generally because uh, normally when they get married, uh, like female, when they get married, they will have their first ring, second ring. After they got married, they don't need their husband to buy for them anymore. Mm. They just swipe the card and buy whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> but husband's card or own, some of them are working themselves, right? Yes, yeah. yes. But I see the uh, woman trend change, okay, since Michelle Yeo is a very big topic now. <laughs> So I want to also talk about uh, female trends changing. Uh, what is changing is actually those days um, female tend to be like 
okay, wait for their boyfriend or their husband or their future husband or their fiancé to buy, you know, to buy for them. Now, uh, a lot of working, career working women, they, 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 they practice self-love. Mm, they can course, afford, yeah, they not? can afford yeah. to buy themselves, uh, buy jewellery for themselves. They will go ahead. Why not? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So what, so, what kind of stuff do they buy? Um, diamond, like diamond earrings. Say if they have a wedding ring already, they would love for for they would love to buy for another pair of earrings, or pendant, to make okay. it like a collection. Okay. So typically, they start collecting jewelry like after they got married, and then after that, they was maybe every once a year or things like that they yeah, will they yeah. will buy uh, bonus you know? time or yeah christmas time or what they will buy correct buy, right? small gift yeah. for themselves or or sometimes it may be given by 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 their loved one you know what about guys guys don't <laughs> buy them no no because in, yeah. in the west especially in america right mm. they like to do the um, the ice watches you know they mm. just buy like if they say get maybe they get a nautilus mm. or something mm. and then they just go and send it to the jeweler mm. and then they just encrust it mm. with like diamonds that, that market doesn't really come here yet, right? Yeah, not 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 so much. Uh, for local market, men do wear jewelry, uh, but not uh not many pieces. Maybe ring that is typical. At most, pendant ring and pendant. But guys, they like to wear one piece at a time, like either pendant, or. Oh, even guys wear pendants. I didn't know that. Okay. Pendant, yeah. Yeah, for guys, mm. I guess um, shows of, mm. I, I guess when it comes to jewelry, right? People mm. do it for like do also as, as symbols or status as well. Mm. So for guys, mm. symbols or status would be like a, a watch, maybe. Yeah, watch. Um, watch is definitely essential. Yeah, yeah. or um, maybe the car, right? Yeah. But the displays of status on men is quite limited. Very few wear necklaces or pendants, mm. or rings. Ring, ring for is women, common. Ring is common. Ring is common. Uh, men do. Like to wear like sapphire ring. Really? Yeah. My fingers are too fat for rings. Uh, no, not necessary. We can custom any sizes. <laughs> Definitely can fit to you. Yeah. Or jade ring. Yeah. 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 Jade ring is still very popular among uh, um, um, uh, you know like men bosses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so moving to investment grade right. Mm. What kind of like um pieces would be investment grade where they really hold the value and go up over time. Yeah, I would say if you're looking for uh, diamonds per se, a one carat and above will be a good uh, keeping. Okay. Yeah, but you need to wait for a, a certain time. Yeah, not not in a short short term investment. Well, the good thing about period, diamonds yeah. is that um, they are very small, mm. very light, mm. very portable, <coughs> and also odorless. Right. So so that's interesting for mm. people who like to carry their wealth with them mm. right so a one carat very good piece would be one carat and above and above so yeah. maybe a one and a half carat would be around about how much six digit okay mm. but if you could you collect fancy color diamond which is more rare oh okay yeah white diamond is yeah popular it is it is the best uh, popular in the market but if you could you collect color uh, diamond like yellow diamond yeah and of Pink course diamond. if you get a pair of them identical pair is even higher value right mm, for earring yes mm. because it's not easy to get twins especially twins for both grade that means this side also uh, uh, vvs and this side also vvs you know the kind of thing okay yeah okay. The, the same grade for both it's not easy to find normally people uh, seek for that for earrings yeah so what's in store for Jura and how are you going to grow the business? Or is it just very much like um, focus on the, the love, the passion, the design mm -hmm. and, and just you know, keep it quite, um, you know, in a way, quaint? Um, as a designer, it's always contemplating. <laughs> contemplating between something you like to design for people or something people like to wear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But that what I learned, okay, along the journey. Uh, for now, I uh, design and produce what market needs, which is very much towards diamond. 
So my business plan is to penetrate deeper into this market uh, for this year. And for what I love to design, it will be for my unique collection basis. And uh, sometimes I'll do send for competition as well on those pieces. And you've won some competitions, right? So I see some of your pieces here, they're quite beautiful. Some of them are award winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I have a couple of uh, uh, pieces that I have uh, sent for international competition. Uh, yeah, and I won an award for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I would say, um, I have few uh, proud, uh, very proud, uh, proudest pieces collection. My first award uh, was from Italy. Yeah, I guess it's the Blue Daisy. Okay. Yeah, the Blue Daisy. Uh, from Italy. How how did you submit for Italy? Oh, we submit online. Oh. Yeah, so A Design Award and Competition from Italy is the largest uh, design competition in the world. Oh. Yeah, okay. so uh, the first piece I submitted, a Blue Daisy, uh, a set of earring and ring and pendant. Basically, this set is a multi-functional pieces. Rings, pendant and necklace yeah, as well. Yeah, it can be wear in a multiple way mm. uh, because I realised... Uh, Nowadays, uh, youngster need something versatile. They 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 can wear into they can wear to like different occasions. Sometimes they just want to wear casual, so they don't need like big piece. So they can actually detach the items and wear casual. And this much inspired by uh, a flower called blue daisy. It's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And you've also got one which reflects the um, pandemic. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a story to mention as well. Um, yeah, because, you know, during pandemic, we were like, <laughs> yeah, facing, so yeah a facing a lot of... Face mask, right? Yeah, downtime. I, yeah, something sparks me and, and I, I got inspired by surgical masks. Oh, why, why I choose surgical masks was because... Uh, that time we look at surgical masks, something very negative, yeah. something that we are not used to wear. And, you know, I changed the way I look at surgical masks. It can be beautiful. It can be sparkle. Therefore, um, yeah, I sketched something and there you go, I made it. And this piece I have sent to uh, 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 New York, another competition. These, these two, right? Ah, yes. Yeah, which is a set of uh, uh, ring, uh, earring, and also pendant okay. necklace. Yes. And then talk about this one. What's the story behind this one? Oh, okay. Um, the purple one. I is it was uh, inspired from uh, orchid, our national, uh, I mean local popular flower. It's quite pretty. Yeah. So the orchid actually in my house <laughs> Oh, <I see. laughs> and it's purple colour. Okay, okay. So, uh, but, but, but because I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mainly, my source of in inspiration mainly from nature. So I, I actually observe and, and love flowers and, you know, things like that. So I design based on uh, uh, orchid and, and why, why the white thing is uh, I want to combine uh, purple, uh, is this actually amethyst, and with white, white is actually the pearl. So I use a combination of uh, both different stone. One is a facet stone and one is an opaque type of stone. And this can be worn uh, at uh, oh, this finger. Pretty. It's like floating, it's like, it's like something yeah. floating in between your fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, com compared to the conventional way, uh, way of wearing it. I'm quite glad that someone mm. like you was able to fulfill her passion because a lot of people who, you know, went into their ninety-five corporate jobs, but then they never fulfill their passion, right? So, quite quite satisfying that you're able to get to this level of uh, success and and to to do what you do. You know, it's it's mm. really. I guess once you start to enjoy what you do, it doesn't feel like work anymore. It becomes like you're going to play every yes, day, right? Yes, it's like part of part of your life. So what yeah. I would advise is, um, yeah, those who are comfortable with a corporate job, just please just stay continue, ahead. Yeah. yeah, 
please stay ahead because entrepreneur journey is is very demanding, very challenging, but it's rewarding, and you need a couple of uh, preparation uh, to to start off because along of the journey, I also made a lot of mistakes. And, but I continue learning. Uh, I took a number of courses. I also found some uh, coaches, a very good coach. coach and uh, now I have a very good mentor yeah, that, that, that can uh, go along with me. So it's kind of a long journey. Uh, I, I would say um, keep trying. Keep trying. Never give up. But if you found your passion, go with it. Yeah. You only live once. What you want to do in life, just try and go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. dreams do life, come right? true. Michelle yeah. said, dreams do come true, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so it's never an impossible thing. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, Ivy. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you, Chong. Yeah, nice to talk to you today. Yeah.